How's it going everybody? Welcome back to set 6. And I thought I was done. I thought I was done with the catch up. But apparently I'm not. Apparently there's a little teeny tiny teeny bit more to catch up on. So, we're going to jump straight into it. We're not going to mess around. This isn't going to be a 20-30 minute affair like the previous videos, he says. We're going to get through this nice and quick. So, don't forget, drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Share the content. Help the channel grow. Do all of the things and gain my love. That's how it works, right? But anyway... Let's get on with it. So the first thing that we're going to look at is from a podcast that happened recently, the Save Point podcast, which is a Square Enix podcast that they run uh, where they talk about Square Enix products. And in this instance, they were talking about Ever Crisis and Rebirth. And one of the hosts on it kind of talks about the First Soldier a little bit, talks about Glenn. And then towards the end of what the saying says... Uh, so last night during the Japanese live stream, they announced... Young Sephiroth will be a playable character in the next update. So chapter 5 of the first Soldier story will release uh, with special dialogue between Young Sephiroth and Glenn Matt Lucia. Ooh. Which I saw you guys speculating, who, who's that hooded figure in Rebirth? So if you want a little bit of backstory, highly recommend downloading Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Heavily suggesting, heavily suggesting that the hooded character that we see in the Rebirth trailer is Glenn from Ever Crisis. It may not be, there may be another character that we stumble across who fits the bill more, but as it stands so far, it's looking very Glenn-like. Which, I don't know how I feel about it, it all kind of depends on how important Glenn ends up being, how good of a character Glenn ends up being, because like I've played First Soldier up to where it is so far and I don't really care that much about him. We'll see how that progresses over time, because they've got a while to build him up. It may not be Glenn. It may be that this is just something that they've said to push people towards Ever Crisis when in reality it isn't him. But let's be honest, it seems like it's Glenn. So the obvious answer seems like it's become the thing because everyone kind of immediately jumped to Glenn. Yeah, seems like it's confirmed. I mean, we'll see. We'll have to wait and see and see how things pan out. But yeah, it, it seems more than likely that that hooded character in the Rebirth trailer is Glenn Lodbrock. Brock? Lodbrock? Lodbrock? whatever, from Ever Crisis. So keep an eye out for that. And speaking of name pronunciations, do you see how I segue in there? Do you see how I segue in? That's fucking skill. Skill. But we have finally had confirmation on how to say... <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to start saying it wrong now that we know how you're supposed to say it. So we now have confirmation on how to say Kate Sith's name. Uh, from what I can see, it seems like it's Kate Seath rather than Kate Sith. So I'm still slightly wrong, but it's not Ketshi. And 12 or 13 people have become extremely angry about that on Twitter. I kind of get it. Although I don't think the people that are getting angry about it on Twitter really have a reason to get angry about it. Because most of them probably aren't Gaelic or don't speak Gaelic. But I can, I can see why it's upset a few people. Like, I get it. It is a Gaelic word. It's a mythological folklore thing in Gaelic mythology. But my point that I've kind of tried to make on Twitter, and I've seen other people making it, I've seen Baby Seal making a similar point and a few others, is that this is a fantasy series and a franchise where they have constantly taken the names of mythological beings, locations, etc, etc, and just changed them and done what they've done with them. And... It is what it is. I don't think it's a reason to get particularly angry. I did see one guy saying the English have conspired with Square Enix, basically, uh, to crush Gaelic culture. And, you know, maybe we did. <sighs> Yorkshire tea. But yeah, kind of glad that's been done. Uh, it's, it's very reminiscent of the Mako Mako conversation from a few years ago. Although I don't really get how anyone came up with Mako. But whatever, whatever. I'm going to set something off there. I'm not going to talk about it. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's going to happen. These names were never established back in the day. You know, it was written in front of us, but it was never established to us as the player how to pronounce these things. So a lot of us just kind of came up with our own pronunciations and ran with it. And when those pronunciations have become ingrained over the course of 15, 20, 25 years, it's difficult to break out of them. So, yeah, I'm kind of glad they went with Kate Seath. Kate Seath, I think it is, not Kate Seath. We'll see. We'll wait until we hear it for the first time. But I, I believe it's going to be Kate Seath rather than Kate Seath or Ketshi. 
But moving on from the Kate Sith Ket She debacle, all I've got as a segue into the next one is a rhyme, and you know, we're gonna go from Ket She to the BBC. Uh, that was pathetic, I'm so sorry. But we do have one more interview that I kind of missed, and it's a BBC one, and it looks like everybody missed it. I, to be honest with you, I've seen it popping around on Twitter over the last 24 hours, which is why I've noticed it. Uh, yeah, I completely skipped out on it. And there's not a massive amount of new information in it. Again, it kind of follows a similar line to the previous interviews. We do get a lot of talk about a surprising development at the end of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which obviously, you know, I mean... I don't know what people expected, but they're not going to finish the second part of a three-game trilogy with everything being fine and cool and chill. Like, obviously, there's going to be a massive cliffhanger at the end of Rebirth, so this isn't new information. They're just trying to like tease people a little bit, but yeah, I'm, I'm impervious to their powers. Impervious. One thing we do get is a bit of an explanation on the open world, which is a little bit interesting. It looks like it's a very open world. I've had people saying, ah, it's open world, we can go anywhere. And it doesn't seem like that's the case. So Hamaguchi has said that it's not a go anywhere you want, do anything you want style of game from the get-go, like Zelda. We start out with a fairly broad area, a fairly wide area to explore, but there are limitations on it. And those obvious limitations are going to be the Mithril Mine. You know, you won't be able to progress into the other parts of the continent until you go through the Mithril Mine. That, we know this. We all already know this. Uh, but then Amaguchi continues, as the story progresses and the game progresses, you get new abilities and open up new areas and the game expands further and further. So it does seem like it's going to be big, massive areas. Like, I don't think they're going to be small by any stretch of the imagination. But it's not going to be a travel around the world, do what you want kind of thing. It is, it's still going to be big zones. If we take FF16 as a comparison, for example, I would expect the zones in Rebirth to be bigger. Although it would depend on which zone. Like the first area, like you've got Midgar, you've got the Chocobo Ranch, you've got a couple of other bits and pieces, and you've got the Mithril Mine. That's probably not going to be the biggest area. When we get to actually play through that area, we'll get a proper sense of the scale. Looking at the demo, it, it looks big, but not gargantuan or anything like that. It looks fun, but see, this is the thing. People get kind of caught up on how big a world is, and I don't think that's the issue. I think the more important thing to watch for is how dense the world is and how much there is to do in the world. Like Baldur's Gate 3, for example. Act 3 of Baldur's Gate 3 has got a super small map space. Super small when you look at it for, for Act 3. But then when you go into buildings and into caves and into dungeons and into areas that build off of it, it's massive. And when you, you think it's built on several levels, so you'll have a building on like the top floor that you can chat to someone, but then you can go underneath into the basement and there's something else going on there. There's just so much density going on. And I think that's the main thing that we need to be watching for with Rebirth. Density. Like 16 had massive areas really, but there was fuck all to do in them. So what was the point? Do, do you get what I'm saying? Like, if Rebirth does similar, and I'm going to say right now, it does not look like Rebirth has done similar to Final Fantasy 16. It looks like there is a lot of stuff to do in the world. It looks like there's a shitload of stuff to do in the world. So I'm confident that it's not going to be a problem, but just don't go into it expecting full open world magnificence because open world games don't necessarily lend themselves to magnificence that readily. You know what I mean? You can end up with a big open area with nothing going on. What's the point? But anyway, that's enough of that. We're going to get to the final piece of news, which is that Square Enix and the cast of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the English voice cast, are going to be appearing at New York Comic Con. Uh, that's going to be on Saturday, October the 14th at 3.30pm EDT, whatever that is. Some weird time zone, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> I don't know what EDP is, don't shout at me. But yeah, they're going to be going for an hour from 3.30pm to 4.30pm. I may try and get a stream of that if I can do. Uh, I know a few other people are going to be streaming it. I'm pretty sure Baby Seal is going to be streaming it, so you can check that out if I'm not live. Obviously, if I'm live, you come and watch me. Fuck all those other guys. Come watch me. But yeah, it, it should be fun. It's hosted by Matt Mercer who a lot of people have been speculating is the voice actor for Vincent Valentine. This would be a perfect opportunity to reveal the god that is Matt Mercer as the voice of Vincent Valentine. Just Matthew Mercer. Just forever Matt Mercer. Always Matt Mercer. Love Matt Mercer. Oh my god, it's Matt Mercer. But yeah, Comic-Con is going down. If you're in the area, I think you can get tickets for it. I'm not too sure. There's full details on the Final Fantasy VII Twitter page, so go check that out. But it should be fun. It should be fun to watch, and I really hope Mercer is 
Vincent Valentine because just having Mercer involved with Rebirth, I know he's a massive Final Fantasy VII fan from watching Critical Role and stuff like that. Constantly see him sat there in like a Shimra t-shirt or something to that effect, you know, some sort of Final Fantasy VII t-shirt. So he's obviously a big fan of FF7 and yeah, that must, it'll probably be a big thing for him being a part of a Final Fantasy VII voice cast. So yeah, buzzing for him, buzzing for us. Everything's good. Everyone should be happy. For Kate Sith, don't forget, drop a like on the video and subscribe for future content because we've got all of the good stuff. The first soldier stuff from Ever Crisis, I'm going to start producing that over the next few days. Uh, so we should have the first chapter dropping, I'd say, by Friday. I think we'll have the first chapter up at the very least by Friday. Uh, keep an eye out on the YouTube shorts as well because I'm going to post my breakdown of Queen's Blood for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, so that'll be in there if you don't want to watch through the whole Tokyo Game Show video. But yeah, like I say, drop a like on the video, subscribe for future content, do all of the usual things that you do, you wonderful, wonderful people. But more importantly than anything, have a great day.